Let's talk about using an interview model for traffic. And this is especially the case when it comes to podcasts. So if you haven't already done so, go to the borrowing traffic module of this course and watch, I think it's lesson 10 if I'm not mistaken. I know it's kind of farther down there on the list there, but it's, it's called the geniuses of strategy. And essentially what it is, and this is something that's worked for a long, long time and you should definitely use it. You can basically get a bunch of people in your industry and in your market to do interviews and then you can leverage their traffic, their lists, when they'll kind of promote their interview with you uh, and send you traffic. And it's a great way for you to borrow authority and up your own brand and expertise in, in a market um, by being involved with other kind of high level people uh, in the market. So go watch that lesson. So 90% of experts, I would estimate, in any market want to be interviewed. All you have to do is ask. You know, they say 80% of people, their dream in life is to publish a book, you know, write a book one day. And, you know, I don't know if it's the desire for fame or whatever, but maybe it's just desire for, con you know, to contribute in some way or have some kind of significance. But experts in markets, they want to be interviewed. They want to be asked to speak at conferences. They, you know, want to be interviewed, you know, on video or just, a, you know, like a Skype recording, an audio. They, they just, they want to be seen as an expert. And so many of them are so open to being interviewed. And let me tell you, many of them, most of them are, will never be asked. They would love to do interviews. They see their idols, the, their, the people in their marketplace that they want to model after. They see those people doing interviews but they don't ever get to do interviews. So most people in a market, most experts are very, very receptive uh, to being interviewed if you ask. So you can use the interview model, for example, for podcasts. And that's what many podcasts are. That's all they are is interviews. Go look at podcasts right now. And for many of them, that's all it is. Someone's like, hey, and today on the whatever, whatever podcast show, I'm talking to experts such and such. All it is is an interview. That's where they get their content. You know what? And most regular radio shows in the world, that's all their content is. You know, if it's not music, if it's talk radio, they have experts come in. Like, look at the Howard Stern show. That's pretty much what it is. They're interviewing celebrities, interviewing people. Don't overlook the power of interviews for generating traffic for your business. If you do it right and you find the proper models to use it with, you can drive thousands upon thousands upon thousands of regular visitors to your business on an ongoing basis, all by leveraging interviews that you can get for free. I don't know how to express this any more than that. So when it comes to podcasts, this is especially an easy thing to do to create the content. Just do interviews. So Let's stick to the real estate flipping example. If that's your market, find other people related to real estate. It may not be exactly real estate flipping, but it could be on getting hard money lenders or these other areas of kind of real estate flipping. How to talk to a guy that does you know home renovations and how he manages construction workers and why that's important to a flipping business. Those kind of things. Well, interview them. Do interviews with those kind of experts, and that's the content for your podcast. You know that's what's going to get you. Uh, you know, that traffic. And again, you can leverage an interview just like you can any piece of content in many, many ways. If it's kind of on video or if you do it over like Skype on a, a video camera, which many video podcasts, by the way, that you'll see, that's all the show is. It's the person that runs a podcast. They're on their little webcam on their computer. And they're going, hey, on today's show, I have the, I'm talking to Sally Smith about, you know, how to get better interest rates on mortgages. Hey, Sally, thanks for joining us. Or they'll do a little intro like, Sally Smith is a 12-year veteran of the mortgage industry and da 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 da, -da and her main website, da 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 And so that's it. And then Sally's split screen on there also on Skype. They're recording it. And they go through the interview for however many minutes, 30 minutes or even an hour. And at the end, there's the entire podcast show. All the person did was ask questions, interact with an expert. So don't overlook the power of the interview. Uh, like I just said, many successful podcasts are just interviews. Now, it's easy to record many interviews in advance. So you can, of course, like I said, you could line up 12 interviews. You could knock them all out in a week. And now you have a year's worth of podcast episodes if you're going to do podcasts, you know, once a month. You could do podcasts every two weeks. You know, then you would need, uh, obviously, you know, 20 something, uh, 24. Um, actually it's a little bit more than that, depending on how many days in the month, but you could do 20, you know, 24 episodes. If you do it every other week, if you do every week, it's 52. Uh, 
but you could do many of them in advance so they don't have to be done every single month. Like if you're going to travel or could be out of town for a month, just you know record some interviews in advance uh, before you leave and then you already have it made. Use a pre-written question template. That's what's great. You could have like 12 key questions to ask your guests. So it's like, hey, why don't you, question one, and you just say, hey, Sally Smith, why don't you tell us how you got started in mortgages or in the real estate industry? Or tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into real estate. So there's question number one, that give their background story. You know, then it's like, number two, it's like, uh, what do you think was your biggest kind of uh, takeaway or your biggest kind of, um, the biggest thing that happened to you that kind of was a game changer in your business? And then they tell that. And the third one is, you know, what's the biggest mistake you see people making when they go to get mortgages or whatever it is about the topic? So that could be a question. What's the biggest mistake? And then another one is like, you know, what are three quick tips you could give somebody to help them what, and then benefit, save money on their mortgage interest? You know, and then so you could just pre-write questions that are related to your market and related to the problems or solutions in your market and just ask the same questions with minor variations to your interview guests and there you go. So it's not like you have to put in a lot of work to figure out what, how, you know, how you're going to interview these people. You know, the important thing is you want to link to the interviewees uh, site. That word looks weird, interviewees. But to the people you interview, uh, link to their site. You know, let them give a little pitch at the end of their interview to, you know, say, and you tell them this ahead of time before the interview. You go, hey, and this is, and by the way, when you email them proposals, say, I'd love to interview you and send you some traffic to your site, of course, and have you on my podcast, link to you on my blog, I'll link to you on social media, I'll link to your site, which can help in SEO. So, I mean, think of all those great benefits you just now I just said that they get for free if they just spend a few minutes of their time interviewing with you. And so it, if it's in their best interest, you'll get a lot of yeses. You'll get some people that say no. In fact, after people watch the Geniuses of Lesson and Borrowing Traffic, uh, after you know a lot of people have seen that, they a lot of people reach out to me and go, hey, I'm doing Geniuses of Internet Marketing or Digital Marketing. I want you to be in it. You know, And I've been asked a hundred times over and I have to decline everybody because one, I don't have time for it. Uh, you know, and two, I'm also very, very selective with interviews and with any type of uh, media that I put out, and that's for strategic reasons. But most people are going to be receptive and say yes if you ask them, depending on the marketplace. You know, if you go and ask Tony Robbins for an interview, you're probably going to get a no or not even get through to them. So don't just, you know, rely on famous people or the top, top, top experts on TV in your market. You know, you could still get some of them to say yes. Never forget, there are many, many other people in any market with really great information to share. And in the end, it's about content. It's not just about someone that's famous. But let the uh, the person you interview, let them pitch at the end of their interview. Say, hey, if you know, if my listeners would like to learn more about you, and you know, what, you know, what kind of salute, what kind of what kind of things do you offer that you know you can help them or solutions? And they say, then they may get into a pitch. They go, well, I have this you know high end course or this class I teach. I teach a new class every month on how to master you know neg you know mortgage negotiations. I can save money, yada yada yada. So, but give them those incentives of you'll link to them and help with SEO. You'll send them traffic on social media, which gets them more social media followers. You'll let them pitch in in the recording, which could drive them sales. You know, let them promote like an opt-in piece of some sort, like a special report or something. So you're sending them subscribers. So these are all things you'd want to write up in a pitch when you'd email them about it, asking someone for an interview uh, because it just has all those benefits and you just make it a no-brainer. So last but not least, like I said before, if you have no time uh, to do any of this stuff, hire someone. You don't have to be the one that interviews people necessarily. You know, if you're an expert in your marketplace and you're trying to build your own authority, then you may want to be on the other end of the interview because you're able to chime in at your two cents. You're also able to up, you're, you're borrowing authority off the person that you're interviewing. It makes you more important by being in the interview with someone else that's very talented, well-known, has authority, has knowledge, whatever. And so it can benefit you very, very much to be the person doing the interviews, but it's not necessary in all businesses, depending on your business, depending on you know your market, you could just have somebody on staff that, you know, that just does interviews with people just to create that content. 